Now, do you see where your bones will lie, Hunter? Before the voice had finished speaking, Dee was down on one knee. The very same needle Dee had hurled ran through his back and out through his heart. But how had that happened? At that moment, there had been no one at all directly behind Dee. Slowly, the shadowy figure circled around behind the hunter. No matter what kind of attack he might make, it didn't seem that Dee could possibly respond. And yet, Dee braced his blade against the floor and tried to stand. The shadow couldn't help but admire that. Most impressive. Being run through the heart like that. You are indeed the Great Ones. Between the pair, something black scattered like a mist. Though pierced right through the heart, Dee had twisted around and slashed through the shadow's torso with his blade. You! You son of a bitch! I can't believe it! Though the reeling shadow retreated, Dee didn't give chase. Once again, he was kneeling on the floor. No noble, or any other creature for that matter, should be able to live with something driven through their heart. His last attack was not only impossible, it was miraculous. Out of respect for the Great One, I had thought to dispatch you painlessly. But now that simply can't be allowed. I shall tear you to bits. He rushed forward, and just then... The world was rocked by a terrific impact. Cracks raced across the ceiling, and then falling stonework and dust enveloped Dee. Left with no other choice, the shadowy figure fell back to the door. The fissure that opened beneath his feet released a powerful stream of water. What was that? Black blood trailed across the floor. A noble's body could immediately regenerate the damage from a simple blade wound. But there was nothing normal about the blow from the gorgeous hunter. A raven appeared above him. There's been an explosion in Dr. DiCario's laboratory. Preposterous. Why should a mere explosion be felt so far as my own bedroom? It was no ordinary explosion. It had dimensional repercussions. Dimensional 